what's good everybody it's your boy zero jackson back with another video let's get it yeah um today we're gonna see the downfall of yet another how do i say it role model go down in the dumps yet again we're reacting to sunny v2's video and well i don't really know how to say the dude's name well his first name but justice a guide to losing your entire audience well, if that's not intriguing, if that doesn't sound intriguing to you, it does to me. So let's get right into the. Let's get right into it, bro. I'm stuttering a lot. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's all right though. Guava Juice's former 200 million view months have declined by over 90 percent, with many of these recent views coming from shorts Guava as his long form juice. content gains roughly a hundred thousand views a video. What on earth happened? Let's travel back to his absolute peak. January 2017, 249 million views. Why was he so successful at this point in time? By then, Guava Juice had already been on YouTube for over 11 years, during which it became apparent that he was incredibly talented at latching onto trends and had built an intuition for what was popular on YouTube at any one time. For example, his 2007 music video parodies were similar to what Smosh had become successful with, and by 2016, he was still competing with other top tier gaming YouTubers like Vanos. Unfortunately, this also meant that Guava hadn't really carved out a specific lane for his channel, which is a necessity for long-term YouTube growth. Well, arguably. You can get reasonable views by joining a genre and making a contribution. However, explosive growth usually comes from pioneering a brand new or underperforming genre, as Guava Juice would come to discover in mid-2016 after uploading a video simply titled Orbeez Bath Challenge. Now, there was no denying that this video was targeted toward children. However, mm -hmm. it still had many different elements of relatability, leading the video towards success. For example, anybody could access Orbeez, most people have a bathtub in their house, so it therefore posed this question of, well, what would be the outcome of this experiment if you did it for yourself? This made the video extremely enticing to click on, and once watching, Guava Juice then validated the audience by providing the exact outcome that everybody had clicked on the video for. A bathtub filled to the brim with Orbeez, which when combined with with a cameo from Spider-Man made for the perfect viral video. Each of Guava's bathtub uploads followed this similar premise of what would happen if you did this in your own house. There was always an element of curiosity. His Ooblek bath challenge even provided a guide for how to make the liquid and it posed the question of- I'm sorry, I'm not talking a lot because this is very intriguing so far. I don't know who this person is. I've never, never seen any of the content, never like, maybe that's just me. I'm, more to myself than I am any other. Yeah, yeah. But like, dude, this is crazy, bro. I mean, yeah, to be successful, but then like, you know, consistency is a lot though. Consistency is a lot to do with your success, but I guess, do what you do on your free time. Oh, well, is he going to get stuck when it finally dries at the end of the video? His Lego bath challenge posed the question of will he get hurt, while his Diet Coke and Mentos bath challenge implied that the Coke might fizz everywhere. Each episode was only three or four minutes long, so why not click and see the potential outcome? The short nature of the videos also meant that they didn't waste the audience's time and were optimized for watch time percentage. And while this goes against the classic trope of- Oh, 2017, that's before the YouTube shorts, huh? So he was just putting in short form videos and then getting revenue from the short form videos. I mean, that's, yeah, okay. Longer videos equals more watch time equals better performance. This has been disproven by people like David Dobrik, who have shown that 10 four minute videos can be better for retention in comparison to one 40 minute video in its full entirety. Regardless, Guava Juice's videos were doing so well that even his water bath challenge cracked 5 million views. Out of all the bath challenges I've done, I'm surprised I never tried water. Leading him to experiment with other types of content in which he'd reveal another simple yet key success component. He was actually excited to make each video. Despite being in his mid-twenties, you could tell that Guava Juice loved every piece of content from making gummy pizzas to building a house out of red cups. This gave the videos a unique, enjoyable flavor, as it was obvious that he was happy to be there, which accompanied his cliche yet ideal philosophy of wanting to improve the content every single day. As long as you consist- Okay, okay, okay. Some of y'all think that I don't, I'm not happy when I'm making videos. 
I think that's just my voice. My voice is very monotone sometimes. Honestly, YouTube, YouTube and Twitch. Well, I'm I'm not streaming on Twitch yet, but uh, I'm gonna drop some news on y'all. So I'm back at work, right? I'm working, and uh, and uh, probably within like the next few months, I'm gonna buy a new PC. I'm gonna start start implementing my my Xbox account onto my PC account. So that I started streaming within the next five, six months, right? My goal, because I already have a team on PC, we are going to be in the next challenger circuit for ALGS. I know, I know that sounds fire, but we do have a lot of work to get done, but it is fun like come out, getting off of work, you do some videos, you see which video that you like the best, bro. There's a lot of videos I scrap because I'm like, uh, you know, I'm at least giving you like raw, genuine reaction, bro. I don't really, I don't really care about all that. Think what you want to think, be what you want to be, and all that. That's what I live. That's what I live by. But like, yeah, it is it is fun being on YouTube. At least showing my face, get people, let people know me. Because whenever I'm filming Apex, then I don't really, I don't really show my face on Apex. Usually, I just show straight gameplay. But yeah, let's get into, let's get back into the video. Silly, make an effort to do better every single day. Things will definitely get better every single day. However, Guava's explosion was also assisted by timing, as viral videos required significantly less time and effort back in 2017. Take for example this video titled Do Not Jump on the Trampoline Ball Pit at 3am, in which the time is shown at the start of the video 3.06, as well as at the end of the video 3.29, meaning this entire episode took only 23 minutes to film. There were basically no props, no script, and the whole thing was shot in one take, meaning the video took only a couple of hours to complete after editing and it's now received over 20 million views. To achieve that same kind of performance on any long form video today requires at least one week's work as well as maybe a team, maybe a budget and even then pulling anything close to that number requires a perfect storm. Back then however Guava Juice was doing millions of views on every single video almost all of which needed minimal planning and could have been completed in under a day. In the process Guava Juice kept up with every trend from Fortnite to TikTok reaction until he'd dip his feet into a brand new video type that would take his channel to a whole new level, his 10 Things You Shouldn't Do series. In the beginning, it wasn't even supposed to be a series. However, after 10 Things You Shouldn't Do in an airplane gained a view count in the millions, Guava Juice doubled down with 10 Things You Shouldn't Do in the movie theater, 10 Things You Shouldn't Do at school, and 10 Things You Shouldn't Do... So he's more like a, a content creator that's catered towards children. 2017? I wasn't... Oh yeah, I was in high school, yeah. I was in high school, yeah. 2016, I was a freshman. 17, I was a sophomore. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds right. 17, 18, 19. No, 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 that's not right. Wait, okay, so 2020 is when I graduated, right? So, 1918, 17. Yeah, I was a junior. I was a sophomore. I said junior, huh? I'm a sophomore. I was a sophomore. Yeah. I, I was on YouTube nonstop, basically. Uh, what was I watching? I don't know. Oh, I was watching a lot of acting stuff, bro. I was watching a lot of acting videos and stuff like that. Like, you know how YouTubers do their own, like, their own scenario videos. 
Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I gotta say, uh... He's coming from shore. Uh, I used to watch his videos and there's like a couple of other videos I used to watch a couple of other, other creators that I used to watch that's the only person I really remember big job because he's a big giant black dude it's a huge black dude so here's why I remember though. On a train, each of which performing incredibly well, and it's really no wonder why. The videos were comedic, relatable, and had a bunch of effort put into them. They usually had multiple people per skit, as well as a full set for every video, which made them extra unique, especially when combined with Guava Juice's absolutely insane style of comedy. Don't be a food inspector! Hello, my friend. How may I help you today? Hello, I'm the food inspector. Uh, could I have one of each food, please? Oh, good. Uh, sure thing. Follow me. I love inspecting food. Right this way, Mr. Food Inspector. You see, all the food should be right over there. What is this? You should have left Woody on the chance! Pasta! Are you here to stop me? Now stay here for the rest of your life! Ah! Ah! Dad? Daddy? Is that you? Your son. These videos went absolutely wild throughout 2020, often gaining what? well over 10 million views. However, in April 2021, seemingly overnight, something began to change on the Guava Juice channel. He went from gaining over 100,000 subscribers every single month to almost complete stagnation, while his videos were suddenly struggling to achieve more than a million views. Why the sudden drop? The decline seemed to begin with a video. No, it was more like a. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, bro. So, it's probably because he got tired of making those videos. Along with probably somebody trying to expose him for something. But then, mostly because he got tired of making videos like that. I mean, playing, playing this character all the time probably has to be annoying, bro. It doesn't matter how... Yeah, it, it's like... Yeah, like Filthy Frank, like Georgie, Joji, Georgie, like Joji, bro. It was like, you know, he even he got tired of playing that character, bro. There was a couple of other characters that just got tired of playing the same character, bro. It's just an act, but huh. more than a million views. Why the sudden drop? The decline seemed to begin with a video by Danny Gonzalez, posted only two weeks prior, titled Guava Juice is Out of Control, in which Danny would critique the absolutely insane nature of every Guava Juice video in a fun and entertaining way. It's just so hard to follow. It's like, is this even a story? Is there a plot to this? They're just like doing random things and crazy things are happening. He can't really subvert our expectations anymore because our expectation is just that something random is going to happen at all times. The video received over 2 million views in less than a week, and while it acted as somewhat of a compliment, since Guava Juice was trying to make insane content, Daddy's video would also act as a catalyst for the short-term retirement of the series. After uploading an episode... So basically he's a hater and he wanted to shill somebody else's parade because he didn't like the content himself. So he made a video about it and posted it to the internet so that he can get clout for shitting on somebody else. Because if it was purposely that he was doing the videos, okay, you know, let their career die by itself. Because the people that he's going, like, making videos for, it's going to eventually grow up. And they're not going to watch his videos no more. Like, there's, I don't know why he was tripping about that.
still to understand humanity, but you know, it's glad to see you. Episode on the 3rd of April. Guava Juice didn't post a 10 things you shouldn't do episode until almost three months later on the 27th of June, after which it became obvious that the quality of the series had dropped off significantly. For example, Guava Juice's 10 things you shouldn't do at Disneyland felt like it had been thrown together with no prior planning. There was no set, there were no characters, and the jokes felt random, but in a way that was more like, what the hell even is this anymore? Don't feed the birds. During the retirement of the series, Guava Juice had instead been uploading increasingly lazy content, such as Guava Juice ranks Guava Juice videos, as well as old repackaged compilations, such as Best of Guava Juice 24 hour livestream, both of which subtly implying that the glory days of the channel were. Sounds like he just ran out of shit to do, bro, and he just wants to be a normal ass person again. That's what it sounds like. It is what people call a creative block. Let's just say that. Because there's no way that he started doing that shit and then he ended up switching up his content and started doing stuff like reacting to his own channel and his own videos. That's the type of stuff that you are basically going through a block. But yeah were coming to an end, as was also indicated by the thumbnails. During his peak, the thumbnails felt clean, straightforward, and were on par with YouTube's meta at the time. And while some of his 2021 thumbnails were definitely on the cutting edge, there were others that felt crowded, dated, or just straight up confusing. The channel seemed to have been struggling from a lack of effort and innovation. However, there was actually a good reason for this. In December 2021, Guava Juice announced that he'd instead been spending his time on a kid's TV series called The Guava Juice Show, which was about to release its very first episode on YouTube Originals. Guava displayed his confidence in the show by purchasing a billboard at LAX, and it was looking like this series could reignite the channel, although only in the beginning. The first five episodes performed reasonably well, averaging around 3 million views each. However, for whatever reason, the sixth episode gained only 150,000 views, with almost every episode afterwards following a similar trend. Guava and his team would produce a total of 13 episodes episodes for the show, after which he'd upload a new video titled The End, in which Guava Juice was unusually upset, possibly as a partial result of the show's poor performance. I've been doing Guava Juice for so long, it's, uh, I've missed my daughter's birthdays and friends' weddings, and, um, I feel like there was just no balance to who I am as a person, um, Guava Juice didn't specify why he was feeling so down, however he wasn't ready to give up just yet, as he then released a second season of the show, which once again performed to a mediocre standard. At a couple hundred thousand views per episode, Guava might as well have just continued making standard videos, and this wasn't even the worst part. Whilst producing the show's 26 episodes, Guava Juice lost touch with the one skill that had always guaranteed success, an ability to keep up with trends and the current YouTube meta. Prior to making the Guava Juice show, he was averaging maybe 700,000 views on his normal YouTube uploads. However, after the second season came to an end only seven months later, it was rare to see any of his videos achieve more than 200,000 views. It seemed that Guava Juice had fallen into the misconception that if he split his time between YouTube and a TV show, he'd achieve double the amount of success, yet the opposite happened and his performance was instead cut in half. On top of splitting his time between two different forms of media, Guava Juice also had to worry about YouTube shorts, his in-store products as well as a bloody NFT project, which has to be one of the dumbest things you can launch as a creator because it's so obvious that you're just trying to siphon some quick cash from the audience. Bro, I said this all the time, do not trust any creator that's launching an NFT or like doing any coin based anything, bro. Don't trust that. But a lot of people, I, I learned I learned early on that a lot of people's word don't hold weight, so I just, yeah. Unless there's a creator that you absolutely trust. I mean, it's all for you, but it ain't, it ain't something I would do. I'm trying to gaslight people or call out, I'm not calling out no names. I'm not calling out no names, I'm just... You know, I'm just talking, I'm just talking.
Bats. Guava Juice's new low was established in a recent video titled My Future, in which he speaks as though his career is pretty much over. I just want to say, from the bottom of my heart, I am very honored to be a part of your childhood. His former excitement has transformed into boredom and complete apathy, as was highlighted during one of the video's announcements. With growing in mind, um, I just want to let you know for this channel, moving forward, I'm going back to my old roots, which is gaming. 2016, I made the channel because I wanted to create a gaming channel. While Guava Juice gives off the vibe that he wants the videos to return to their former glory, it also seems like he's lacking the motivation and clear vision to get them there. And as a result, he's trying almost anything, including sympathy from the audience, to achieve an increase in viewership. However, this has only had the opposite effect, as most of his gaming videos struggle to achieve 100,000 views. Guava Juice has made it way too obvious that he doesn't have an interest in producing the content, and this lack of commitment shows in each and every upload. The videos just feel a bit generic and aimless. A great YouTube video should be fresh and energizing, something that makes you want to click just like the bathtub videos did during the channel's heyday. And while it's clear that Guava Juice is slowly rebuilding his intuition for what makes a great video, he's yet to return his skills back to a competitive level. That was a lot. All right, Joe. Well, we went through that one together. And, uh, you know. All that happened. That was crazy. So, with that said and done. It's been your boy, Zoe Jackson. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Hope you have a great rest of your days. Because, you know. It's kind of hard out there. It's tough. You guys gonna have your bad days, your good days, all because we're having the greatest days that you guys can ever come up with. And with that said, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.